about uh, day one of using my machine. It's set up and it seems to be working fairly well. It's not bolted to the floor yet, so it's still a little bit shaky when it's doing some higher speed stuff. But uh, it looks pretty good. The x-axis ball screw will get some work because it's not quite concentric, which gives it quite a rattle, but uh, nonetheless it's still quite accurate. So here's the machine itself uh, set up, and what we're going to do today is carve the, the open sign from the Vectric software on this chunk of MDF right here. So I got the computer set up right here, running Mach 3. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll do a tool change. Change, uh, we're basically ready to go. The, just got to load the code and, and zero the tool and away we go. Uh, I should mention before I start that even though my spindle using a servo motor works well and it's you know fully controllable through the software it's not really fast enough and I'm not sure why I can't get the 4200 rpm out of it but uh, but I can't so it's gonna seem kind of weird cutting this material this fast but I'm using a four flute end mill just a you know, one that was basically worn out from doing plastic, but it still cuts to MDF just fine. So, uh, we'll, we'll zero the tool. So, I gotta try to do this with one hand on the keyboard. We'll go right down, get her fairly close. We'll call that zero. We'll zero that. Now we want to load the right G code program. So uh, say file, load G code. And first thing we'll do is the pocket. So that's basically what the code looks like. I know we can't really see that, but uh, it's actually a really nice program that Vector creates when they do G code. So we'll just. Uh, Good cycle start and away we go because there's nothing else to do. Everything's ready to go. So here we go. Oh, I'm overriding my feed rate too, so we'll reset that. So it goes at full speed to start off with. basically just sizzles through this material like nothing. I cut some aluminum last night and it seems to do that at least as good as my mini mills, if not slightly better, so pretty happy about that. Did some plexiglass today, that worked so good. And cutting my black plastic that I normally use, it just totally smokes through that stuff, so it's a great, it's going to be a big time saver. So what it's doing right now is, is cutting all the, the flat parts of the open sign. And I've actually got it set, it's only taken an eighth inch deep cut. So it's, it's actually going to do this twice, so I don't know, it's about 15 or 20 minutes, something like that. So we'll just watch it for a while and get the idea of how it works. You can tell it's, the whole machine is pretty quiet. There's the x-axis. Going along that. Still got to do some painting, obviously. I added that support in and I think that, that helped quite a bit. We have a look under the machine here. See the, the uh, Y ball screw going.
pretty thrilled about how it works. I'm measuring the parts uh, on a six inch piece of plexiglass this morning, I was out five thousand on the outside dimension, so that's well within my spec. Nice not to really have a space limitation like a mini mill. Pump down anything on here and cut it out. My total size is 24 by 21 and a half, so about 10 times the travel or 10 times the working envelope of the mini mill. So we'll just uh, give that a quick vacuum off so you can have a look at what it's actually doing. but once it actually uses the V-bit around the edges, it cleans it up really nice. It turns out quite well. Even at this extremely low spindle speed, it's probably only turning out about, I don't know, 2,500 RPM or so. And if I crank it up anymore, it seems to want to stall fairly easily, even on its own sometimes. So. Uh, the feed rate right now is set at 75 inches per minute. <clears throat> My maximum on all three axes is, is about 270. And they will all do that without really any problem. I have the, the rapid throttle down to, I think it's 180 right now, 180 inches per minute. So. Until I get it bolted down to the ground, I don't want to really go much faster. It is a little bit shaky. This fizzles for this stuff, though. To get my to get a higher speed, what I'm going to do is, is buy a different pulley for the motor. The reason I use this, it, it's a one-to-one -one gearing right now, but I wasn't going to have space to, to put in a bigger pulley on the motor. But now I see I got actually quite a bit of room in there, so I could probably get a pulley with you know an inch bigger around, and I'm not sure what what it works out to, but it, it could be substantially quite a bit. That little glitch on the servo motor, on the spindle motor every once in a while, I, I'm not sure where that's coming from. I, I have a feeling that it's the computer because every once in a while you'll see the, the pulse frequency drop suddenly for you know a split second and then come back, but I haven't experienced that on any of the other drives, so unless they're doing it and I just don't hear it, but it doesn't seem to be losing its position, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. But we'll let this run, and uh, once we're ready to do the actual V-carving, we'll start again.